Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura, and I'm often asked, why do you have two irons in your sewing room? One is a little travel iron, and one is a regular size iron. Well, the regular size iron, I like to do my very first big pressing. So if I have a large piece of fabric, I do want to use that large, strong, high heat on my fabric. As high as my fabric heat can go, it's what I like to use. And it's especially great for if you're quilting. If I want to starch or do any starch alternative, I'm going to do that in my very first pressing with that big iron because my fabric is big. And it's so important that we press our fabric before we do any cutting. The reason is, is the fabric can be like little teepees where the folds have been or the wrinkles are in. So those little teepees are not going to line up with other fabrics. Quilting has such a small little seam allowance, it's nice that those seams are going to match up. So I do press my fabric very, very flat first with my big iron. After that, I like to pull out the smaller iron. So today I am going to be using the little sister of my big Oliso iron. And this little travel iron or the project iron has the same heat as a very large iron. It also has steam inside, so I do have these little steam holes and some steam buttons. It heats up fast. It has this great silicone mat that I can put the iron on and I can hang this up also with that mat. I do have a few settings on this dial so I can go to a high heat, medium or low. And it's really easy to fill up if I do need a little bit of steam. Another thing that I really like about this little iron is it doesn't turn off. My big iron has a safety feature so it turns off if I don't use it after a certain amount of time. The small iron stays on so we need to keep that in mind as we are sewing. I find for my quilting that medium heat is really all I need. This is great to have beside your machine if you have a little project so you're not having to get up and down to do your pressing. It still has that nice little pointy tip. It still has that diamond coated ceramic plate so it stays clean. I turn it on and I'm ready to go. So there are often times when I am making a block I do not press as I go along. I know we should but sometimes I just get at the machine and I want to do one right after another. So then I have the situation here where none of those seams have been pressed. So the little iron is a great one to get into this type of a thing so that I can press and go out as I need. So when we're pressing, I do like to press from behind the first time and just use a light heat. So I'm going to take this block and just give it a very slight tug because I do not want those seams to fold over. And depending on the size of the block, just a couple of pins to hold in so that I can just slightly tug this. I'm not stretching it. I'm just making sure that this seam is flat. And I really only want to press that center to start with. Ever slightly, give it that tug and press that center seam a little bit. From there, I'm going to do a side. Same idea as I just put a few pins and now I can stretch in this direction just a little bit because I'm not stretching the block. I just want no fold overs on the other side. And now I can continue pressing coming out. And you can see where this is giving me the chance to press the seams in the direction that I want without stretching that fabric. I'm just making sure that those seams are going to lie flat. And then the last ones I can just press out. So the back side I have all of the seams going in the direction that I want. From there I'm going to give it its second pressing from the right side. 
and I am going to try to follow the directions. So I have the seams going in this direction and this direction. And that is the way I'm going to be pressing. And I'm not pushing down on this iron. I'm just letting the weight of the iron and that little bit of the heat go in that direction. So I start from the center and go out. So then these seams are going to come in this direction. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. And you can see by doing that, I've had very little distorting in this block. If you need a little bit of steam, we do have these buttons here. And that's going to give us some steam. I use the steam very little on these irons because I just want the heat, not the moisture. Unless I have a big wrinkle, then I'll use that steam. There's also another way we can press this. And what we're going to do is use the edge of our ironing surface. So let's say this is a seam that I need to press. So if I'm going to want to just do this seam, I'm going to pull this block to the edge of my board. So I'll pick it up and I push that block so it's not on my ironing surface, just that seam that I want to press. So the iron is not going to press this bottom piece. I can only work on that seam and that's what I want. And this is great if you're going to do a long piece of fabric like a jelly roll strip where you sew together. So I can still give that fabric that nice little tug just to keep it straight and I'm only pressing that seam. And that's going to prevent these seams from being pressed over accidentally. Sometimes our iron's going to take that seam and press it over and then we have to go back and press that back and then do this. So to avoid that, I press just the seam that I need. And you can see that this is a lot lower than this piece. So I could press the one seam, pull that down, keep this out of the way, pull that over, and press the next seam. You can do that with the seam side up, but you can also do that with the seam side down. And that way we really know that we're not distorting anything underneath. So if I really just want to work on that strip, it's the only piece that is sitting on the ironing surface. So this last border does have a lot of wrinkles in it. So I want to give it some extra pressing but not on here. This is where I can turn up that iron heat and I can use my steam. So I'm smoothing out that seam by my hand so I know that it's all flat and in the place that I want. Now I can press and I'm pressing versus ironing. That ironing motion also helps stretch the fabric and sometimes we need that but in this case, I'm just going to slide gently over just where those areas are that are maybe a little bit more wrinkled. And this is where I can give it some steam. So that little iron can get into little points. It works just as hard as the big iron. And something to remember is it doesn't turn off. So there's no touching it to turn that back on. It's like the good old-fashioned iron. You either turn it off and you turn it on. So the little iron gives me everything that the large iron gives me. It just fits into littler areas. And I like the fact that I can have this sit right beside my machine so I can stitch and press and stitch and press and stitch and press. Thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe. I'm on Instagram, Facebook. I have a newsletter. It's all free under So Very Easy. I'll put some links in the description for you. And as always, thank you for joining me. Bye for now.